This deck, four grave crawlers, four diagraph ghouls, four dross messengers, four cartel aristocrats to go along with four blood artists, two blood throne vampires, and then the spells are four lingering souls, three tragic slip, three orzar charms, two soren lord of Innistrad, and two copies of blind obedience. And we'll get to the sideboard after this game is over, but Jacob Dobbs on the left playing mono red. Uh, and his mono red deck is pretty uh, standard. Um, similar to like the old mono red decks prior to Gate Crash, except he added Boros Reckoner. So, you know, he has cards like uh, Pillar of Flame and Searing Spirit as his spells, and then he has one drops like Stormcroak Noble, Rakdos Cackler. He's got Azdella, Lightning Mauler, Boros Reckoner, obviously. Hellrider uh, tops off at Hellrider, Falcon Wrath, Aristocrat, and he has two copies of Pyro Ardwolf. So, he, he has 22 lands, so he doesn't play cards like Thundermore Hellkite. Um, but, you know, a traditional, traditional mono-red splash black deck, similar to the one we saw earlier. True. As we do see a little bit of back and forth here, two Grave Crawlers have been hit by Pillar of Flame. Um, Scott did not sacrifice that, that second Grave Crawler to Cartel Aristocrat, which is a little bit surprising. You know, it could be in the graveyard instead of being exiled right now. But nonetheless, Jacob only does have one land to work with here. And we do see Scott play a Blood Artist. And he's going to play a second Blood Artist and just pass the turn back. So Jacob's going to draw a card. Finally does draw his second land. And we do see a couple of Vash Zealots there. So we'll see if he's going to decide to start there or not. Yeah, it seems like uh, playing an Ash Zealot and swinging in is probably a reasonable play here. Not sure you want to just pillar a Blood Artist right now. You're not really doing much. Um, obviously, if Scott draws uh, Lingering Souls, um, it's going to be uh, pretty good for him. But I think you still want to smash in with the Ash Zealot. And as you guys do see Jacob reading Cartel Aristocrat, we're going to bring it up on the screen for you guys. This is a card that we've seen in the Human Reanimator strategy mostly, unless you are drafting Gate Crash like crazy. Um, but in this deck, as we do see a Pillar of Flame, Scott's going to sacrifice a Blood Artist there. There's going to be a little bit of drain and gain here. Second another creature does gain protection. You can actually just fireball your opponent out. With that, plus Blood Artist, plus either a Grave Crawler, maybe Lingering Souls, what have you, a lot of ways to deal some indirect damage. So we're going to see another Ash Zealot here from Jacob, and he is just going to pass the turn back. Yeah, I think he really wanted to attack first. He sort of forgot, maybe he forgot about that ability. Um, if you attack first, you basically put Scott on either sacking his creatures or just taking two. In all likelihood, he probably just takes two there. Sure. So you get, a, you get, the, you get the attack, and then you can Pillar of Flames. Um... But, you know, Jacob's starting to draw land now, so he's able to start getting, like, Reckoners out there. Um, blind Obedience certainly makes things a little awkward for him because it, it, it makes him question whether or not he wants to attack with all his creatures or leave a guy back to block because he just can't cast the blocker because they all come into tap now. So, a um, little awkward for him, but still, you know, he's going to be able to start getting Reckoners uh, into play. I think he might have a Hell Rider in his hand, too, so... Um, Definitely uh, much better shape than he was a couple turns ago. That's definitely true. So you see Jacob going through a couple of situations here. You do see a Blood Crypt in his hand. Trying to figure out what he wants to do to get around that Blind Obedience, but he is just going to start with Ash's Elves coming across. See Cartel Aristocrat going to jump in front, sacrifice a Blood Artist, give him protection from red. So it's going to be able to take down one of the Ash Elves. The other one's going to get through. You do see a little bit of drain and gain there because of the Blood Artist. And now we'll see a Boris Reckoner coming to play tap because of Blind Obedience, Blood Crypt, and Jacob's going to pass it back to Scott. So Scott's um, relatively high life. Scott, uh, uh, Jacob is relatively high life. Scott doesn't have a lot of pressure on him. Um, doesn't look like the extort's going to matter too much this game. Yeah. Um, with cards like Hell Rider, you know, the, the damage is going to be, you know, pretty fast and furious. So interesting to see. Um, if Scott can, it, Scott doesn't have cards like Obzidot or anything that can really like he can top deck and just blow out Jacob. So um, unless he draws, uh, unless he has a removal spell in his hand, he's able to top deck another one. Looks like it's uh, Jacob's better creature just going to take this one. Yeah, a little bit surprised not to see Obzidot in the black white zombie deck list that Scott does have here. I know it is a little bit expensive at five mana, but you know there's not another card like that in the format. You know, its effect is irreplaceable, and once it does get online, it is one heck of a card. Yeah, and it's really good against Jund and, like, Blue, White, Red. So, I I'm surprised more people just don't play that card. Um, but again, five mana, maybe people just want to try to keep their curve low. Um, but there's the Hellrider now, so threatening to do um, 6, 7, 8, 11 damage next turn, which means that a Searing Spear could actually just um, seal the deal for Jacobs. 
So now we do see a Giraffe's Messenger here from Scott, plus the Extort Trigger from Blind Obedience. It's gonna make that happen. A little curious as to why Jacob didn't play the Hell Rider anyway, because you know, if you just play the Hell Rider pre-combat last turn, the Hell Rider is gonna trigger the two guys anyway. So it looks like he missed out on two points of damage there. He's gonna play a Mountain. Last two cards in his hand are Lightning Mauler and Boros Reckon are both gonna come into play tap because of the Blind Obedience. But you know, attacks here are pretty safe, all things considered. The problem is he can't. I don't. I'm not sure attacking with all three guys is a great plan because yep. um, he can basically he can't kill Scott because Scott's gonna be able to block. He can sack the Dross Messenger to give it pro red and deal another two damage to Jacob. So then he's threatening to do six damage um, to Jacob on his turn. So Jacob could actually be dead if, if, if Scott has like two spells in his hand, you know? So Jacob has to be a little careful here, careful, careful here about his attack. So you're going to see Hellrider and Ash Zealot come across here. But he takes two. And we'll see if he's going to decide to block a certain way, and he's not going to block at all. So now we're going to see a Boros Reckoner, and we're going to see a Lightning Mauler coming Wow, play. I'm surprised he didn't uh, block there, because I think one of his only ways to win is to try to drain him out. Because if, if he draws an Orzo Charm there, it's really not bad for him. Yeah. He can kill the blocker, attack for six, um, and drains him. He would have drained him last turn with the Dross Messenger. Um, it looks like he just has lands in his hand, though. Yeah, so. it looks like he's flooding pretty badly, but actually this might be a Soren. Okay, so this is a Soren, Lord of Innistrad, plus an Extort Trigger. But he might just be too far behind now. You know, even if he does make that 1-1 one, one life linker, well, you're going to see some beatdowns here. Huh. So, did he... I think he did the uh, plus one effect. He, I mean, he either... He, I, I think he gave it... Is, is, did he use the emblem? Yeah, he or? may have used the emblem this turn. Either way, I mean, there's only two things he could have done. Either use the emblem or, uh, or make a vampire. So... See, it looks like he's going to block the cartel aristocrat here. And as, as long as those life totals are So, yeah, are it looks correct, like he made an emblem. Yeah. There's your Soren emblem. Reckoner is going to get in front of the cartel aristocrat. Jacob's at nine, though. It doesn't look like enough. I'm not quite sure how, he's gonna, how, how Scott can get those final points of damage through. You see Cartel Rich Scrap Bite the Dust. Yeah, and unless I'm missing something here. Yeah, he's, Jacob untaps really fast then and serves them all in. Yeah, yeah that's it. So Jacob Dobbs is going to win game one here against Scott and his Black White Zombie stack. I was trying to figure out if we were missing anything there, but I, just, I, don't, I don't think that was the case. Just D.O.B. Yeah, he, he needed a, a removal spell and... Um, Short of that, there's really not much you can do. Well, taking a look at Scott's sideboard here from the Black White Zombies deck, you're going to find another copy of Soren Lord of Innistrad here, uh, which I actually think is probably pretty good, especially because he is on the play here, so it's realistic to class this, cast this excuse me, on turn four and have it interact with the opponent. Uh, two copies of Liliana the Veil. You're also going to find two copies of Living Ring, two copies of Mutilate, and then three copies of Duress here in the sideboard. Um, and, you know, if he, wants to try to, if he wants to try to take the controlling route, you can board in those Mutilates. Um, along with those Oblivion Rings, if you want to take a more proactive approach, I think Soren's pretty good. Take advantage of, of the fact that he is on the play. And I think Liliana the Veil is going to come in here regardless of which approach he wants to take. Um, yeah, I, you know, Jacob basically has uh, three Flames of the Firebrand that he can bring in that are good in this matchup. He also has four Duress, four Appetite Brains, and four Volcanic Strength, but I don't see any of those coming in. Um, I, I think it's basically three Flames of the Firebrand. Uh, don't love Pyreheart Wolf in this matchup, um, and um, might cut maybe uh, one of the Rakdos Tacklers and someone draw, but again, um, doesn't seem like there's a lot of cards that he wants to bring in in this matchup, or at least that he can bring in. You know, Volcanic Strength obviously isn't coming in. Duress, I don't think there's really, you know, short of a Planeswalker, which I don't think Jacob cares about that much. I, I don't think there's really anything he wants to duress. And Appetite for Brains, you know, there's really... Uh, Scott's deck pretty much tops off at uh, three. He's got two Sovereigns, so... 
don't think the appetite's there. So probably just three flames for like two pyro art wolves and maybe um, one of the random one drops. Uh, probably maybe noble. Um, but yeah, I, this matchup just seems like I guess if uh, whoever's on the play, um, I'm pretty huge. If if Scott managed to go turn two blind obedience. Uh, it would have been a lot better for him, but I, I don't know if his deck is just powerful enough. It, it just looks too weak compared to, you know, some of the, like, Hell Rider is pretty much better than any of the creatures in Scott's deck. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, the best card in this Black White Zombies deck by a lot is, of course, Dross Messenger. And there are some interactions here with Blood Artist and Cartel Aristocrat and some good things that are going on. Lingering Soul is obviously a powerful magic card in a vacuum. But he needs to, it, it feels like, you know, he's kind of playing like a combo deck. He needs to be able to put it all together and make it happen. And with the red removal, you know, between Pillar of Flame and Searing Spear being so efficient, you know, he can break it up pretty easily. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like the best creature, the best card in his deck is Jaros Messenger. And Jacob has four Pillar of Flames. And he's bringing in Flames of the Firebrand, which can deal with Blood Artist and, and Grave Crawlers and, you know, uh, and Blood Throne Vampires and Wings of Souls Token. So it's just, uh, I think that between the Mono Red Burn and like creatures like Hell Rider and Aristocrat, I just think there's too many things that Scott has to contend with. Well, we'll see how it's going to break down here. Scott is going to be on the play here, taking a look at his first seven cards, see if he wants to keep them. Like, Scott's deck really needs something like an opposite act. You know, he needs like a heavy hitter that can, like, take over the game. Yeah, some sort of just game-breaker, Yeah, honestly. Because it seems like, again, his deck is very combo but he doesn't have some, one card that he can draw that can just turn everything around immediately. Yeah, they're just, like, he, like Grave Crawler, Diagraph Tool, he's trying to, he's, it, it just seems like he's trying to um, kind of be an aggressive deck, but not really. That's always been my problem with Blood Artist, is that, you know, you, you, you have eight one-drops that are basically, you know, aggressive drops. And then you have this two drop that doesn't do anything really, you know? It kind of, it can kind of help you uh, drain their life, but it's it's really not a good aggressive card. Like, you don't want to play, an, if you're an aggressive deck, you really don't want to play two mana old, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's just not something you want to be doing. And uh, I, I, that's, that's the only problem with a deck like this, is that it seems like it has some synergies, but they're not really overwhelmingly powerful synergies. They're just like cute things that you can do that maybe you'll win the game if your opponent's behind. But, like, given parity, you're not going to beat a card like Thragtusk or Huntmaster. That felt. Like, there's just so many good cards in the format. Yeah. You, this is not where you want to be at, you yeah. know? You want to do really powerful things or kill your opponent very quickly. And this goes back again to a discussion that we just had a little bit earlier. Just, you know, if you're going to play an aggressive strategy in this format um, that is based around playing one-drops, that sort of thing, again, you have to have a pretty good reason for not doing the Champion of the Parish. Um, experiment one Boros Elite type thing that people are doing now and seeing success with. So we do see a tragic still take care of Stromkirk Noble. And I'm not entirely sure, you know, that Grave Crawler and Diagraph Fool are the place to be when those cards exist, as we're going to see a Blind Obedience here from turn two on Scott. Yeah, and again, that's a that's a great card for Scott, but again, having to waste a tragic slip on a Stormkirk Noble, um, that's just... <laughs> that just seems like... You, you don't have any card drawing in your deck whatsoever. You know what I mean? So whenever you're trying to one-for-one one your opponent, there better be something that you can do to either break open the game or draw cards, and he can't do either. So it looks like Jacob's going to be able to just attack through. Um, Jacob kept an intro, well, I guess off the mulligan. Um, one land, double noble, pi uh, pillar of flames, not the worst card. Yeah, worst and we saw him win with a one lander last game, too. He eventually drew out of it and finished the game off. Scott did mana flood a little bit there, but again, he doesn't have you know the heavy hitters that to take advantage of something like that. As we do see Liliana of the Veil here come down, take care of that strong Kirk Noble, and pass the turn back. Still without a second land here, Pillar of Flame is going to take care of Liliana. As we do see Scott miss his fourth land drop, does draw a Godless Shrine this turn, however. So but again, if he had some way or some big card to be able to take care of things here. You know, Soren is one of the cards I think would, would do a nice job here, but we are going to see a Lingering Souls plus a Drain, so that's a good start. Yeah, I, I, I think that, like, Lingering Souls is a decent card. Um, when you combine it with Soren, it's great, too. But he only has two Sorens, so I'm not quite sure what his deck is trying to do because it's kind of, uh, it's saying, yeah, I'm kind of like a zombie deck, but I also have, like, these Blood Artists, and I also kind of have Lingering Souls in here along with some Blind Obedience. Some, there's really... There's, it doesn't seem like there's a very good consistent theme here, you know? Um, but, you know, he, 
he's not doing bad against an opponent who has one land in play, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, looks like he's probably got this game wrapped up. We are going to see a Diagraph Pool and pass the turn back. Mountain here for Jacob, so he does draw another land. You see a hand, a couple Falkenrath or Scrats, a Searing Spear. There is a Boros Reckoner in there and a copy of Flames of the Firebrand. The question now is, can he get those cards out of his hand fast enough? But what you're also going to see here as the Searing Spear takes care of the Diagraph Pool is that Blood Artist is actually going to have a relevant effect on the game now because with each creature that dies, he's going to end up keep taking damage, so he's just trading cards for his own life total now. Yeah, so, but he does have the Flames of the Firebrand, which is good, so... If he tops it to third land, he's able to kill um, everything but the messenger effectively. But uh, and exactly what he draws. Um, but again, the fact that Scott had a, a messenger, that's um, that's going to be tough because Jacob is basically even if he does get the flames of firebrand, he's taken three from the blood artist. Um, then he's taken another three from the attack, and Scott will be able to flash back lingering souls and extort him. So I think Jacob sees the writing on the wall, doesn't bother to keep playing. Yep. And he does concede the game. So we will have a third game here as Jacob goes to the sideboard immediately for something. Not quite sure what it is, but he's very, very Probably eager to Probably another land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's very, very eager to sideboard something in here. And yeah, and, you know, it, it all... It, it, he had to waste a pillar of flames on a, uh, uh, a Liliana, which he normally would just attack and doesn't yep. care about. Um kind of unfortunate that he couldn't get uh, any lands, but again, um, he's on the play now, and I still think his deck has the advantage in this matchup. Yeah, being on the play is the big deal here. One thing from from the last standard format, and this is a point that's been brought up many times over, is that the zombie deck is very good when it's on the play and not the best deck when it's on the draw. Obviously, these creatures are not something that are meant to block very well. Draw Messenger comes into play tapped, as does Diagraph Pool. Grave Crawler actually just says can't block, and of course, Blood Artist is no one. So this is a deck that's not really tailor-made to block very well. It, it would like to be out in front of its opponent, putting the pressure on, and putting him in some sort of goofy situations. But now he's going to be on the draw against the mono red deck that does put the pressure on and does it very, very quickly. So we'll see if, you know, having white instead of being black-red, like traditional zombie decks are, even the black-green ones, maybe if white does add a little bit better defense to his deck, because it does bring to the table with it Cartel Aristocrat which is a pretty good blocker. Lingering Souls, which can make a lot of chump blockers. Orzhov Charm, which is a fun way to interact. And Soren Lord of Innistrad, if he is able to start to take the game over, he can actually start gaining life and chump blocking and doing all that stuff. So it's not impossible. No, it's not impossible, but at the same time, it's like, why not just play the Aristocrats if you want to play cards like um, Cartel Aristocrat and Orzhov Charm and Lingering Souls? It just seems like, um, it, it seems like he just sacrificed some power for, for, you know, no real gain, you know? Sure. You're not really gaining that much by just playing two colors. Um, but again, you know, maybe the synergy will pay off in this game. Both players keep their seven. We're underway. And Jacob does have that turn one strong for Knoble yet again. Does he have a tragic stick? Nope. Scott's just going to pass the turn back. Jacob is going to come. Is he going to? Okay, he's going to ash out and come across. And there is no tragic slip here. So Scott is going to take three. He's going to go to 17. And he's going to take a yeah, draw. The issue here, oh, he doesn't have a white mana. Mm -hmm. So, again, um, that he basically shut off Tragic Slip now as a, a, as a way to deal with these two guys for now. Um, he's got Orzo Charm, but he doesn't have access to white. So, you know, Jacob's Jacob really doesn't need any other creatures to win this game. He's got, no. he's got burn spells in his hand. He has an Aristocrat, uh, which can... Um, come down next turn if he chooses to, but honestly, he could just burn out um, any of the creatures that Scott plays or just throw it at his face. Yeah, you see two copies of Flames of the Firebrand in Jacob's hand. You're going to see a Liliana in the veil here from Scott. He's going to make him sacrifice a guy. Asphalt's going to bite the dust. And we'll see what Jacob does draw this turn because he doesn't have the black mana yet, as you do see a Hellriders to draw stuff. He actually doesn't have a fourth land either, but Flames of the Firebrand is going to deal one there, two to Scott. And then he's going to come across even harder with that strong Kirk Noble, deal three points of damage that way. And so now it is very important if you're Scott to draw a white land here, just to be able to interact in some way. And he does draw just another swamp. And you do see Osif in his hand, a tragic slip as well that he drew last turn. All right, so he has the messenger. Um, at this point, I think Jacob just wants to throw the burn at his face. Yeah. He's got so much of it. You know, why bother even casting a Pillar of Flame. You see Pillar of Flame, Pillar of Flame go upstairs, it looks like. Yep, and that's it. Yeah, that's so, going to do it. 
not much Scott can do. You know, he doesn't have access to light. Jacob had turn one 